welcome to Thursday. True and Trivial Talk. With Matt and McGinty. He's Matt. I'm McGinty. Yep. I do have a first name, but... We're not going to use it. No, we're not going to use it. No, yeah. it's it's Daniel. I'm it's... not ashamed of it. I'm proud of my name. <laughs> just Matt and McGinty just sounds so much better. Yeah, yeah. You know, the That's alliteration. Gotta the go alliteration. For it. Man, are you ready for another show? We got a fun one today. I am not ready. Oh. Okay. No, no, I'm totally kidding. I'm ready. Let's we we do better this. get ready because we're doing this. Yeah. Cut, like, cut, cut, start up. No, <laughs> it's it's recording. Um, so it's Daniel, live. today we got we got a great show. Here's what we're doing today. We are going to do a fall feud. Like, are you familiar with Family Feud? Yeah, we got kind of a fall theme. Yeah, it's for a today's fall episode. Yes, yeah, it's gonna be nice and cozy, right? Um, mm. Yeah. So we got a fall feud. We've got a camping goat. Remember how we did the goat, the grace of all yeah. time? Yeah, so the grace Today, of all time camping. Camping is the theme. Sweet. And we are going to look at an article called The Can Do Church. So yeah. It's are you great. a can do church? Are you a can do church? So yeah, man, let's start off. How you doing? Man, I am uh, I'm doing good, but I have to say I'm a little like burnt out on all the politics stuff. You know? <laughs> I think everybody is. We're taking yeah. a break. We did two episodes talking about, you know, pre election stuff and yep. then we had a post election pick me up, which apparently no one wanted to listen to because I think we're all sort of burnt out on politics <laughs> right now. You didn't even like the Sean Connery Trump tweets. No, they liked it. I, well maybe they will no. when they listen to it. But. Listen to it. It's funny. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's uh, good stuff. I th- I crack myself up. You know, maybe you're not like me. I make myself laugh all the time just because I think I'm hilarious. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just, I don't know. You do, uh, you do crack yourself up a lot. But I, I laughed, uh, I laughed so hard doing those Trump tweets. Yeah. Um, when the Sean Connery, especially when that you was, like drop that Spanish one on me. Yeah, I just was, was not prepared for that, that at was, all. That was gold. Anyway, yeah. so we're not doing any political stuff this time. This no, just we're not. Have some fun, but I'll do. But I will say this just before we move on. We see we're if you, I know. I'm just saying, if if you I can't help myself, <laughs> if if you are struggling, if you are still wrestling through, go back and listen. Yep. And uh, there's there's lots of good stuff the last two weeks. Even though the election, uh, I would say it's over, but we've been told it's far from over. Hey, so, who knows? We call it the post election purgatory. <laughs> right. You know, we don't know where this thing's going to end. So up. if you need some encouragement, go back and listen. Um, but we're moving on. We're yep. uh, it's a new day. And, uh, hey, it's fall. We're going to celebrate some fall stuff. Yeah, and uh, we're kind of in sort of the no-shave November, I like to say. You know, it's sort of that time Who's where— Who's we? Because I just shaved today. I know, you shaved today. <laughs> I didn't prepare you for this at all. I mean, I, I trimmed to shave too, but I'm not going to lie. I'm going for the, the non-committal mustache right now. Yeah. And I don't look good in it, but I'm doing it anyway because I believe in promoting men's health. As long as your mustache doesn't come over your mouth so that you have to lift it up to drink coffee. <laughs> no, no, like, no flapping mustaches that, here. If, in, in case you wonder what I'm talking about, go so back I'm, and listen to last week. Um, I'm very self-aware that I'm not Burt Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> And I, you know, and my dad has a mustache and he looks naked without it. Okay. Like it's like a part of his body. Like he, I think he was born with a mustache and some men just really rock it. I have a non-committal mustache. I'm going to yeah. like, control the, 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 the non-beard beard. <laughs> See, I used to, I used to enjoy growing the beard for like, a, you know, a couple of weeks, but then after that it just drives me nuts and it's coming in, it's, it's coming in white. You can tell a little <laughs> bit of that right there. Um, so Some yeah, it's pepper. like, it's like, I'll just keep that there, but I don't want it all over my face. So. Anyway, enough beard yeah. talk for now. Yeah. Um, my cowardly mustache and uh, non-committal the, mustache. The, the ladies listening don't care. Totally. They're in like, fact, we need to really work hard to really appeal to you ladies for this podcast because apparently it's a little skewed on the male end of things. So I to our demographics <laughs> on the podcast. Uh-huh. So ladies, if you have some input about what you would like to listen to, what other ladies like to listen to, tell us. Which cause... may be the reason that when we talked about pumpkin spice, we got all these. I know. It's a boom. I love it. Do it again. Well, guess what? We're going to do it again. We're going to talk about some fall <laughs> stuff and pumpkin spice. Maybe. Is just maybe going to be might, in might there. Show up. Maybe. It might show up. All right. So are you ready? I'm doing it, man. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a f- version of Family Feud, but we're going to call it Fall Feud. So are you mm. familiar with Family Feud? I am, man. Survey says. Well, I tell you, I, you know, I used to love watching Family Feud growing up. And <laughs> uh, back when the, the Richard Dawson, like back in the day, um, yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. But now Steve Harvey hosts. That's right. And uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to watch. Um, do you like game shows? Um, you know, Brooke and I used to watch – um, Wheel of Fortune a lot. Wheel of Fortune. I'm not a game show person. I grew up on game shows, and so like when Alex Trebek died last week, that was I was sad because like I grew up with Alex yeah. Trebek, and so um, yeah, 
Okay, uh, that has nothing to do with this because he didn't host Family Feud, so nope. he hosted Jeopardy. Let's be right. clear about that. Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you some fall questions. So these are for you, Daniel, and also for you All out right. there. Where you try and guess, according to a survey of 100 people, mm. how did they answer this question? All right, so I'm going to give you six questions. Okay. You ready for the first one? Bring it. All right. According to a survey, okay, 100 people polled, Name something that people put on the front porch in the fall. Okay. Okay. So, so I have to think of these things. What got, I think the number one is, I think you, you have to go, think of number one. Just think of any that something. are on the list. Like I think pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin definitely on the list. Okay, good. All right. Forty-two people um, said that. So give me two more from that list. So forty-two percent. I would say some kind of leaf wreath. Wreath. Yep. Eight. Oh. Eight people. Said okay. Wreath. Okay. okay. So wreath. you get one more. Um, is this just for the fall? This is not counting Christmas. It's just for the fall. Just fall. So yeah. we wouldn't have Christmas lights up yet. Nope. Um, some kind of inflatable something something. <laughs> we have like Mickey and Minnie vampires on our yeah, front yard. No, that's not one of them. No. Okay. You get and one it, one more guess. It's in the front yard, or just front porch. Front porch. Front porch. Yeah. Uh, some kind of, I mean, welcome sign. No. No? No. I'll give you the other answers. You did good. You said pumpkins and wreath. The mm-hmm. other the other choices uh, answers were mums. Mum. Hay bale. Wait, mums? Yeah. What's a mum? Mum is flowers. Mums? Uh, you, you put them in the front door? Yeah, is that like, just for prom? No, like a to put homecoming? No, no, no. Like like mums. The the <laughs> the the flowers, the yellow flowers. I think that's Okay, so we're not doing a great job. We need our the female ladies. audience to help us out here. <laughs> I on think the, the mums are like things. the yellow flowers that you put out that are real. Pretty. Let's go with that because I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> I think I think okay. And uh, hay bales or corn? Who puts hay, hay bales in the front porch? Uh, apparently, everybody that answered this survey, you weren't a part. Maybe of that. they like that's what they would like to do, but they don't do. <laughs> I you don't know? do. And then corn, like the dried corn thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the dried corn. All right. Let me give you another one. Here. I got you ready? Pumpkin. All right. You did. Name something popular to eat or drink in the fall. Okay, a survey of 100 people were asked this question. <laughs> Name something popular to eat or drink in the fall. Well, you know, you have to say pumpkin spice something drink. What kind of pumpkin spice drink? Pumpkin spice latte. Yes, pumpkin spice latte <laughs> with 22 people voting for that. Uh, but that wasn't the number one answer. Well, something turkey? you can eat or drink in the fall. Turkey, yes. Okay. 16 people said that. That's the number three answer. Pecan pie. Uh, pie. That is the Just number pie. one. Okay. Yeah, that's the Let's number one. Thirty-three people said that. Eat or drink. And there's apple cider. Apple cider is definitely Boom. on there. Good. Oh. Two more. Two more. Man, eat or drink. One. One of them is a drink. One of them is a drink. Yeah. Hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. Yes. There's one more. And I'm gonna go in terms of eating. I mean, if we're thinking like Thanksgiving, I'm gonna go stuffing. Oh, that's a good one. But the. Survey of 100 people, they said... It's in such a role. Caramel or candy apple. Oh, yeah. Candy yeah. apples or caramel apples. That makes but total sense. But you did good, sense. man. You killed that one. That's good. All right. I know my fall. All right. So name something that reminds you of fall. Name okay. something that reminds something me of fall? Something that reminds you of fall. Well, that's so, like, very broad. Well, when you think of fall, like what, what you know, when people say, <laughs> I love the fall because of like this or that. Okay, so activities or things happening. All right. Could be. Jumping in leaves? Jumping in leaves is the number one hey! answer. 38 people said that out of 100 people. Nice. All right, what else? Um, festivals? Festivals is not on there. What? But that's okay. That's okay. all right. Um, activities, things to do. Like when you think of fall, like I say the word fall. One of the first things that comes Roasting to your mind. marshmallows. Roasting marshmallows is not on what? there. What? Yeah. Man. I am striking out here. We must have had a bummer <laughs> fall this year. Uh, man, I give up. Okay. I, I call pumpkins. Oh, pumpkin carving. 23. 23 yes, was... people said that. Football. True. 18 people said that. Halloween. 12 people said that. And then oh, cooler weather. Cooler weather. Yeah. yeah. We're finally getting cool, cooler weather here. Ish. Coolish. But the leaf changing this year in, in our part of Texas has actually been really pretty. Like, yeah. In past years, it's like, yeah, whatever. But we actually have gotten some very nice leaf color changing. Very nice. Very nice. nice. All right. Here we go. Next one. Name an adjective that describes fall out of 100 people. How'd they answer this? I'm going to give you a, I'm gonna give you a help on this one. Give me a help. I'm going to be... give you a help. I'm going <laughs> to give you a help. All right. All, there's four answers here. 
And all four mm. of them start with the word C. So name an adjective that describes fall. And we go colorful. Colorful is the number one. Okay. 63 people said that. Um, community? No. Nope. That's not even. No. <laughs> that's that's that, a noun. That's, that's so, so, that's that's so Christian y, so churchy. Uh, community. Community. What do you think yeah. about people coming together for Thanksgiving <laughs> and getting together family? You not know? this year. No. You'd... COVID. COVID. Yeah. Is, is COVID one of them? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Typical um, fall, not not fall 2020. Yeah. Typical fall. So they, adjectives that start with the letter colorful. C. Colorful. You got colorful. I got colorful. Carving? No. no. That's a verb. I'm, I'm striking on here. You ju- We just talked about one of them as far as weather goes. Oh, cooler. Cool. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's, I'll take the hint. That's nine Nine of those. <laughs> that's nine people said that. And then nice. two other ones. You just want me to give them to you? Um, let's, I'm going to try try strain myself here a little bit. Okay, think, gears. think if, need a hint. if it's cooler and maybe see so you put on like a jacket or a blanket, you are cold. No. <laughs> cozy. Cozy. Yes. Our 13 man. people said that. And what's the last one? Crisp. Crisp? I wouldn't. Come on. I, hey, I, I didn't make this the up. The air is crisp. Pie right. is crisp. We got two more. Two more. <sighs> okay. Two more questions. Bring it. Name a weekend activity popular in the fall. Weekend activity popular in the fall. Yep. Uh, Out of a survey of 100 people. Uh, how'd they answer this? Weekend activity. I would say. I mean, I'm thinking camping because I—that's something we. Camping's definitely on there. Okay, camping's on okay. there. And how many? Eighteen people said that. Eighteen people said that. What about football? Since we've mentioned activities, football's not on that particular list. Mm. Nope. Like, is there a general like sports or something on there? Mm, nope. Nope. These are all things that you do in the fall. A weekend activity that's weekend fall. activity. Okay, think. Do you go anywhere in the fall that you? You see go? family. No. Visit, I mean, that's the thing. You yeah, it is a thing, thing, but according to these 100 people, I'll just, you mean, what do these 100 you? people know, man? So the, know for number one are. answer, 51 people said this visiting a pumpkin patch. See, I already said that with festivals. That's what I was that thinking. That was a different question. That was a different question. Yeah. So, okay, visiting a pumpkin patch. I couldn't say, hey, give me that answer later. All right. Uh, so, visit pumpkin patch, camping, okay. um, jumping in leaves. Uh, would be one going on a hike. That's not a weekend activity. Jumping in the leaves. It's your backyard activity. Or hey, you like spend the you spend Saturday raking the leaves, and then your uh, kids jump in them. I was thinking of something you might go out of town for, uh, you know, like a weekend. Hey, we're going out to do this special event. Leaves. Come on, that's a chore. <laughs> well, for us it is, but for a the chore kids, with benefits. For the kids, it's fun. All right, and sitting uh, around the sitting around the fire. That's a, yep. that's another one. All right, I'm gonna give you one last one. I feel like okay. weekend really threw me. I'm for sorry, that. dude. That's okay. okay. You you did good, you did good on other ones. It's all right. Just not on that one. Okay, last one. Brilliant. Talked about pie earlier. Love mm. love pie. All right, name something <laughs> that you need to make a pumpkin pie. Name something you need to make pumpkin pie. According to a survey like of 100 ingredients? people, ingredients. Let's see. Let's see. Those of you out there who canned are cooks. pumpkin something, the, the canned <laughs> pumpkin stuff, pumpkin pie filling. Okay, fifty six okay. people said that. All right, uh, actually thirty six. I'm sorry. 36. Sugar, sugar. Yep, twelve people said that. Uh, crust, crust. Yes. Okay. Now, does the pan count as an ingredient, an item you need, or is it? It is. Just... You do need the the pie pan. You need yes. the pie pan. Okay. Okay. Two other That's things. On there. Um. I'm going to say whipped cream because pumpkin pie oh, without whipped cream is just, it. it's a sin. And it is. Yeah. Well, I don't know about is it on there? It's a sin. It's not on there. But. It's, it. it's not. No, nope, it's not, not on there. there. Milk? Some kind of Milk's dairy. not on there either. What? Uh, okay. I think you need um, condensed milk to make it. Maybe so, but that's not on there. What? So, like, think of things that you're, you need to add to it. Cinnamon? Yeah, spices. Hey, spices. And there's spices. one last thing. Pumpkin what spice. Do you, what do you have to, <laughs> what do you have to have to Bake the pie. You need an oven. You need an oven. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Survey says. Making yes. tea is not good at this. <laughs> no, you did good, man. You did good. You did good. All right, cool, man. Well, thanks for bringing that. Uh, well, you know. I, you guys actually did that with your youth group we, last night, right? We did. We did. Had your, your youths do with it. They had fun with it. Yeah, cool. they actually got together as family groups and, and helped come with the answers. And Very cool. Failed miserably on a couple of them. But that's that's Okay. It's all good. All right. Well, we are going to move on to our next segment. We're going to do a goat. The goat. The goat. Greatest of all. 
Now, do we have like a? We got to put the screaming goat in there. There will be a screaming goat in there. <laughs> there it is. Okay, here. Here. <laughs> All right. Do it in post. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do a goat segment, and yeah. the theme is camping, camping, or getting outdoors. Okay. Um, we, in fact, I'll tell you, we've been trying to figure out what to do about Thanksgiving. You know, because we don't really, we've been. You know, we don't let anyone in our house. We kind of make it our fortress, um, not a solitude. Uh, but we, you know, you think about going to other people's homes and stuff. We try to avoid that with the, the whole COVID thing. And so we, our creative solution for Thanksgiving is we're going to do Thanksgiving camping. So we're trying to figure out what foods and stuff we can do on a campsite. So we're all outdoors, you know, not breathing recycled air and that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to do a, a camping COVID Thanksgiving. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, that's kind of why I thought about doing this goat segment about camping. Okay. Okay. All right, so Matt, when you're camping, when you're outdoors, what is the greatest of all time hot drink mm, for you? For me, yeah. I mean, I go back and forth on this between uh, hot chocolate and, and apple cider, but definitely not coffee. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would have to say, I would have to say, um, I love peppermint hot chocolate. Peppermint hot chocolate. Yeah. Hey, to each their own, my oh, friend. To love each it. their own. No, you don't. You don't like mint either, do you? Peppermint? I don't like minty things in hot stuff. You know, it's just not my jam. Okay. Not my jam. Uh, my favorite drink, greatest of all time, I think camping. I, I'm gonna say coffee. Yeah. You know, because let's face it, when you go camping, you don't get good sleep, and so yeah. that that morning cup of coffee is like, oh, praise Jesus <laughs> for this elixir of life. Full disclosure, I actually just drank a little bit of coffee. I don't drink the stuff, but man, I just I needed it this morning. Didn't sleep well last night. This so podcast to... was hinging on whether or not <laughs> Matt Downing would it's choke a, I don't down think it's helped. It's a helped, cup of coffee. But not enough for me to drink it every day. I, I, so if Matt looks really buzzed and his eyes are dilated, it's because... I, had... I put a lot of chocolate and a lot of <laughs> vanilla. You tried to take all the coffee out of the yes, coffee, didn't you? pretty much. Pretty much. Just wrong. So. I will say what's really cool, if you go camping, doing a French press coffee. Where you just get the pour the hot water over the grinds and push through, it gets all the natural oils, a lot of flavor, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a coffee nerd thing, but it's good, tastes good. Okay. All right, um, let's see here, and also, I will say I like my coffee sweet, so like a mm-hmm. a caramel, you know, kind of flavor creamer to put in would be really good going camping because caramel is like a, a fall flavor ish. So like, how do you take all that stuff with you? You like you car- take a cooler. <laughs> you know? Be sure to pack the caramel. Yeah. Is well, it, the, the caramel. I say caramel. You say caramel. Car- Mount caramel. Caramel. <laughs> caramel. I don't know. Caramel. caramel. But you can say however caramel. you want to say it. Uh, we yeah. Can t- tomato. Tomato. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's caramel, but that's cool. <clears throat> Greatest of um, all time, hiking trip for you. What's been your oh, best hiking trip you ever been on? Okay, so this was definitely not the best, but it was the most memorable. Oh no. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Did the Grand Canyon. Dude. And went went all the way to the bottom mm. without a great plan for getting out. <laughs> uh, in, in college, a group of us said, "Oh, we could do this," and we took like a couple bottled waters mm. uh, with us, and and we made it to the bottom. And by the time we got to the bottom, there was no way we were getting out of there. We didn't have a place to stay down there. There was, I mean, God provided and took care of us, <laughs> but it was awful. It was <laughs> awful. Like getting. Climbing up out of oh, the Grand man. Canyon, uh, it it took. It's like this is easy going down. Yeah. And you're like thinking, wait, we have to go back. There's no elevator yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, it it took us about I think nine hours <laughs> to get out of there. Nine and hours? I, I oh think my so. Word. Yeah, the, I mean, just with, with stops. You know, we had right. We had some on the trip with us that uh, weren't as um, yeah weren't as capable of doing it, and so we needed to take frequent stops for them, but. Man, by the time we get out of there, it, uh, that's the most memorable. It was, of course, it was beautiful, just the view and everything, but uh, not the greatest, but the greatest memory. It's epic. epic. Most epic for yes. you. Yes. Your turn. I would have to say the greatest of all time hiking trip I ever did was with my bride on our honeymoon in Hawaii. We went to the island of Kauai for our honeymoon. Yeah. And, man, there's some epic hiking there around the there Nepali is. coast, and uh, it is just so so beautiful mm-hmm. and you're hiking on these super tall cliffs around the coastline and yeah. just stunning and you end up at this like waterfall place a secret beach or something then to this hike and it was really cool and also i would say the second best greatest fall time hike was also in hawaii and it's funny i pitched it to brooke like hey it's the highest 
um, boardwalk hike in the world. Like you hike on this boardwalk to get to this really cool view. And, you know, it's like an eight mile hike. And, she, and Brooke's thinking, boardwalk. Oh, cool. And in her head, <laughs> she's thinking of like Disney World boardwalk or by the ocean boardwalk with their shops and such. She's like, wow, that's amazing. It's way out there. And I'm like, it wasn't that. At and all. I didn't really communicate that to her. I just yeah. thought she assumed. But so we get there and it's like two planks of wood. Going over the swamp. Board walk. Yeah, they're boards and you walk <laughs> on them, you know? Oh, it's man. really cool because it's also the highest swamp in the world. Like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not sure she thought that was really cool. No, she was like, this is a boardwalk? And she's like, yeah. what is this? I'm going home. <laughs> like, no, 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 it's cool. Let's get to it. And we Biggest setup and let yeah. down. I, it wasn't intentionally misleading. Yeah, it you just, were. No, you, it wasn't. Yeah, but it was were. a really epic hike. It was really otherworldly. Very cool. All right. Um, greatest of all time, Camp Spot. And I will allow huh. glamping. Yeah, in uh, this if you need to. <laughs> I mean, so growing Sisters. up, growing up, I was in I was in Boy Scouts, and we went camping every month. There were some great, great spots that we went to. Um, Did you ever complete the whole like? Are you a Boy Scout Eagle? Did you get, go that far? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm an Eagle Scout. Dude, look yeah. at this! This guy's yeah. an Eagle Scout. Yeah. Um, my my wife and I went went camping our first year of marriage. It was eighteen degrees at night outside. It was pretty crazy, but it was it was a beautiful degrees. Yeah, this was up in Oklahoma, dude. But, uh, cold. It was cold, but it was a beautiful spot over in uh, Turner Falls. Mm. Um, and we also yeah, you mentioned glamping. We did a uh, we went to Beaver's Bend earlier earlier this year and had a I mean it's a beautiful area. Hmm. Uh, we, we took the family and that was a uh, it was a lot of fun and and just beautiful. Um, so. It was a cabin. I, it seems weird to call that camping, but you know, we'll let it slide. Let it slide. All right, dude, your turn. Uh, okay, the one I'm going to go to is probably not the most beautiful location or like super awesome, but it, I think it's kind of the funniest. So, greatest of all time camping spot for me was when I was in college. Uh, it was like Saturday night, and a group of my friends were all hanging out, and we're like, "Hey, I'm bored. What am I going to do? I don't know. Hey, why don't we go camping on the beach?" And it was like a three hour drive away. I'm like, oh, sure. Yeah. And so within like thirty minutes, we threw some sleeping bags. I grabbed my four person tent. Threw it in the car and we just left. Like yeah. that was it, and there was like no preparation, no thinking. And we get to the beach at like I think like eleven o'clock at night, close to midnight. Yeah. And the water, the tide, it was like a full moon. And the tide was super far out, like yeah. almost a mile away from what looked like the it, the sand dunes. Mm-hmm. Like man, this is crazy. So we pitched the tent on the pitched the tent on the sand dunes. You know, plenty plenty of distance away from the ocean, or so you thought. And. <laughs> Wake up in the morning and the ocean waves are like lapping at the tent. Like the tide shifted dramatically. Yeah. Like the tent almost got washed away in the ocean. And two that of my was... friends were sleeping face down in the sand. Oh. They were like all huddled in this small tent trying to stay warm. And while the ocean is like about to take our tent away. It was fantastic. That would have been bad. Yep. Yep. What was cool though on the way there, we passed Daniel Island. So I got a picture of that somewhere. <laughs> Anyway, so okay, greatest of all time camping food. S'mores. S'mores. Okay, yeah. went dessert on that. Yeah, okay. man. I, I, I think so. We also used to do this, uh, uh, this thing when we were in Boy Scouts. It was called, uh, um, oh, what are those things called? Hobo dinners. Hobo dinners. Yeah, that's yes. what I was gonna say. Uh, okay, well, I'll let you say. It. Well, we, would, you know, it's fun. You kind of you know, get the tin foil. We call it tin foil yeah. dinners. You just put the seasoned meat and potatoes and carrots and whatever else you wanted in there in the tin foil and. Throw some seasoning in there, yeah, and just you stick it in the fire, yeah, right. And then when it's done, it's done. You eat it, and it's dark. You can't tell if it's cooked through or not. And you might get food poisoning, but yeah. hey, yeah, those are uh, those are good times. All right, yeah, greatest of all time, outdoor family activity. Um, oh, he didn't give me these questions. Let me think about that. You go first. Oh, right, you go first. Yeah. Um. Man, we kind of invented a game last time we went camping as a family where I took a bocce ball set and I. I put the the white jack in the middle of the camp spot, and then I went and like hid all the bocce balls. And so the kids had to find their color and then grab the white jack <laughs> before they, the rest of their siblings could do it. So it was a great sibling rivalry game we kind of just made up. Um, I don't know if that's cool. the greatest game of all time, but that's yeah. just kind of <laughs> what I'm thinking. It was fun. We like to play like redneck bocce ball, where like you just you take turns throwing the jack somewhere off in the middle of nowhere, yeah. and you get your bocce balls, and it's like. Cross country bocce ball. <laughs> yeah, sounds fun, man. And it's good times. Yeah, so uh, you know, for for us, I mean, anytime we uh, go camping, we want to try and find a place that's close to water. Kids mm-hmm. love getting in the water, love True. swimming and fishing. Kind of cold and, this time of year, but yeah, kind of cold. Uh, but uh, boys really enjoy going fishing, and 
and uh, just hanging out by the fire, telling stories. So, man, cozy. This just feels cozy in yeah, fall, right? I say cozy. Yeah. All right, greatest of all time card game. And this doesn't have to be like playing cards. Like they can be like like all kinds of different games I that would, use cards. Can you go camping? I would have to say cards? I would have to say Uno. Uno, that's a good one. Yeah. You play like what's it called? Crazy Uno or we've got, Uno? We've got Uno Flip. We've got uh, all the Unos. We got like three or four different. More than one Uno. Spin. Uno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's lots of numbers of Unos. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of Unos. Not just Uno. Uno. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun playing that game. What about you guys? I like playing. Um, Monopoly, well, Monopoly deal. Oh yeah, it's you know a lot of times they try to take these board games and translate them into a card game, and it's just a failure. Monopoly deal is a fun card game based yeah. off of Monopoly, and what's great about it is it only takes like twenty minutes to play the game, whereas Monopoly takes it's a day commitment. It's forever. It's yeah. forever. Yeah. Right. So, and it's it's a really fun game where you can really just mess people over. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my my daughter gets very competitive playing that game. You you get pretty competitive, I'm sure. I get competitive in just about everything. You don't. That's just my jam. You don't let your kids win. I. You know, parents have different philosophies about games. Mm-hmm. My philosophy is I don't let my kids win ever. I don't go easy on. Them. I'm not trying to help them think through how they could win, and teach them to be better game players. Like when I play Settlers of Catan with my seven year old, which. Is, it's not really a game for seven-year-olds, but she'll beat me, and I've taught her some pr- pretty good strategy on that game. So uh, when they're when they're crying, it's real settlers. When not they're the crying kids and mad at you, you just say, "Honey, I Next did time, this. Baby. I did this for your good. I love you." <laughs> and it's kind of like a Lex Luthor's dad I'm, kind of thing. Like I'm training you, you to be this evil I, genius. I torture you and and make you lose. I will and, let them win sometimes if I feel yeah. like they need it. And they'll go easy sometimes. Brooke will go easy on the kids playing games. Like no, no, I'm not gonna let you win. You got to do your best. And that's the way you learn. So, all right, uh, let's do last one. What's your fi- greatest of all time fire making technique? I mean, I don't know if it's my favorite. How do you I mean, approach it? Well, do the teepee. Do the uh, teepee? With the, yeah. With, and so you're not a log cabin style. You don't do the. No, I, I do the teepee. And, okay, and, he does the teepee. Start with the, the kindling and the tinder, and then, uh, yeah, and, and then just. Keep adding a true, stuff. A true boy scout. <laughs> now, once you make the TV, do you cheat? Do you pour you some uh, some accelerant on it <laughs> and then go from there? Or do you just try to like... If I have it, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's funny is like you're... If, that's exactly my technique too. My dad taught me the TP technique. Yeah. I got to say that right. The TP technique. TP technique. Um, you know, you just start with the paper and the small stuff and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, yeah. You know, you know, but I'll throw... <laughs> I'll throw some like, you know, lighter fluid on there. Why not? Why dude? not? Just get it going a little bit faster. Yeah. And, so. It's there. I've never been a log cabin style builder. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like to yeah. do that, but I'm like, ah, it's harder to rearrange the logs after that. I feel like anyway. If people if people aren't campers, we've probably lost them. We by probably now. lost you. But yeah. you know, what? if you're not a camper, <laughs> hey, try it. <laughs> try it. Seriously, it's awesome. It's we, fun. All right. Well, we're going to move to our more serious segment here in just a second. We've got to take a quick five-second break. We are going to go through an article uh, from the Tom Rainer website about the difference between a can-do church and a can't-do church. So Good here's stuff. our five-second break. Here we go. Dope. All right. We are back. From our five second break, I think it's actually technically shorter than five seconds. It is like but a, every time I see it, I'm like, that wasn't whoa, five seconds. Fastest five seconds ever. Yes. Yeah. Or an eternity if you just missed us that much. I don't think so. Nope. Don't no. think so either. No. Hey, we love you guys. And uh, we are going to talk about an article from Tom Rainer's blog. And the tar- I don't, the <laughs> <laughs> the title of the article <laughs> must speak English. The title of the Let article. Let me take this. Is... Me... All right. So the title. No. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> is the difference between a can't do church and a can do church? Like the church has faced a lot of obstacles this year with COVID yeah. and everything going on and whatnot. And um, a lot of churches are struggling out there. Maybe your church is struggling. I know our church has had to deal with a lot of different challenges about when's the right time to do this or bring people back, how to do grow groups, how we do them live and, and you know, also Zoom at the same time. It's just been every week. It's and just, put on top of that, you know, losing a pastor. Lo- you know? Yeah. And for us, we yeah. lost our, we say we lost. We didn't lose him. Our pastor retired he's after being home. here 30 years. He's at home. We know where you are, Pastor Yeah. Steve. He's fixing the sprinklers <laughs> in his backyard. You know what I'm saying? He's he's living the good life. We miss you, by the way. Yep. Pastor yep. Steve, if you listen to us, 
we missed you, man. Do you think he's listening to this? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> he's like, I've had to listen to these jokers. <laughs> I'm done for with another. those guys. <laughs> uh, seriously. Anyway, but uh, so we've gone through a lot of changes, yeah. you know, um, and so your church may be going through some changes too, and mm-hmm. there's obstacles you know, get in the way of, can get in the way, maybe, of you sticking true to your mission as a church to reach your community, to disciple those who are there. And so we want to kind of go through some different things that are indicators that you are a can-do church. It's all about attitude. And all, so a perspective lot of, and attitude. and Right. What yeah. makes a church have a lively optimism over a dead pessimism, Yeah. all right? And it's a real battle, and it's a real challenge. It's easy to slip into that sort of oh, pessimism. And, and every church, stuff. yeah, every church has those people that that like person complain, well, or, or the people yeah. uh, <laughs> just like to complain. And it's like you hear them, but you also have to say, okay, we, we hear your concerns, but how do we fix the problem? Constructive criticism. Yes. What can we do to be better at what we're doing? Right. For sure. Right. All right, well, the first one is Matt going to read. <laughs> All right. The first one is, we're the right size. So the, what this article says is that the people of the can't-do congregation believe the church is too small or it's too large to accomplish anything. So the can-do people look at it and say the church is always the right size. Church size is mm. not an issue for an optimistic church. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not concerned with growing their church. No, they, the point should is, be. whatever size you are, yep. is we can work with this. Yeah, and you have to. Like, looking at that and saying, okay, we're not a big church, or we're not a small church, but this is who we are, and um, you know, we're going to continue to further the kingdom. We're going to continue to live out the Great Commission and grow the church, but we're not going to complain about how big or how small it is, we're going to be faithful to what God's told us to do. And that's so. a real issue because if you're in a smaller church, let's say under 100, which is the national average, yeah. right? Actually, I think the national average is 50. Yeah. Um, but if you're at a church of like 100 people or so every Sunday, and right now during COVID, mm-hmm. that might, if you're rocking 100, you might have previously had 300 yeah. each Sunday, yeah. you know? And so that can be very discouraging. Say, well, we can't do as much because one, we, just not as many people here, right? You know, the enthusiasm sort of dwind, you know, dwindles a little bit, especially during worship. If you have a bigger sort of sanctuary and like a lot less people are in there, mm-hmm. it can feel very cavernous, yeah. And the energy for worship can definitely affect things to some degree. And I think, I think too, when you look and if you may see. That the you know there's there's lots of empty seats and right now you know churches are dealing with that. With you have COVID, to have empty seats, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, it's spaced out. But you know you can look at that and that could that could wreck you the whole rest of the time. Where is everybody? What? Or you just say, look, worship is worship. I'm going to worship God mm-hmm. and I'm going to I'm going to be here and I'm going to focus on what God has me to focus on. I'm not going to focus on where where is everybody or there's too many people or they're too close. Or, just Worship God, yeah. and we we as a church had this issue in terms of you know filling up a sanctuary because our sanctuary was built for like twelve hundred people, I believe, yeah. maximum occupancy. And so at the time we had we were all together. The idea was for all of us to be together, but then we had two distinct music services, uh, contemporary and traditional, and so that got cut in half. And so the occupancy inside of the sanctuary was like twenty three percent or something. Mm. The calculations I did, so it felt. Just really just empty. And yeah. so our solution as a church was to still keep our two distinct music services and have them happen at the same time in different venues, which was right. just nuts. And then the traditional crowd comes and joins the, the contemporary crowd in the main sanctuary for the sermon and for the yeah. invitation and baptisms and that kind of stuff. And the ever awesome video announcements. Yeah. If you don't know, I, I make the video announcements for the church. So <laughs> shameless plug. Let's let's find all the ways to pat ourselves. I know, right? Okay. All the ways. Um, but that was sort of our instead of saying we can't do this or this is a bummer that we we came up with creative solutions. And I don't know of any other church that that has attempted this. Yeah. Maybe because they're not as nuts as we are. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But we've pulled it off and we're we we're doing it still even during these sort of COVID times. We have yeah. two simultaneous music services. And we come together for the sermon. And it's it's weird, but it works, you know? (laughs) All right, man, next one. What we got? We have the right people. The right people. The can't-do church sees the people it doesn't have as a problem. If only we had these kinds of people here, then we could do this. 
The can-do church sees the people it has as an opportunity. Yep. You know, God has placed certain people in your church for a reason. Those people are there for a reason. And the question is, what can God use them for in this time and this place for the mission of the church, right? Mm. Um, Matt, you got any thoughts about this, dude? No, I think I think you're right on. I think that it's it's important to look at who you've got. I mean, that's God has put the people there in your church uh, at this time for this season, and um, and you know He's He's given you what you need, and you got to do it. You got to um, again, not that you shouldn't go out and find. More people because recruits. Uh, oh, recruits. No scalping right. though. Don't go to other churches. How about <laughs> like, reach? Hey, you want to come over to our church? Yeah. <laughs> uh, reaching and and um, going out there and and saying, hey, we've we've got what, we've got what we need. We've got who we need. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could look at it and and think we, if only we had that. But again, you're just gonna you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Thinking that way. And you, you gotta just and if your eyes go. are open too, a lot of times you have no idea who can do certain things in your church. You go, yeah. wow, you have that skill or I didn't know what your job was. Yeah. Man, you're that's what you do for a living. We could totally people tend use to, that. People tend to rise to education. You know? Seriously. Especially at a time like this for us where, you know, we may not have a, a pastor to be our lead shepherd, but we have other people who say, Hey, I I can help with that or I can do that. Mm-hmm. And so Plugging in people to volunteer for the mission of church, you never know until you ask. Yeah. And if you are not involved in your church or you just kind of attend and you know, man, I really want to get involved, but I don't know what, man, talk to one of your pastors or one of your Sunday school leaders or grow group leaders or small group leaders and say, hey, I want to get involved with serving the church. How can I do that? This is sort of my skill set. This is what I'm passionate about. Uh, I want to get plugged in. Giving, Give me an avenue to do that. And I want to encourage you all to do that. Man, right now, churches need volunteers more than ever. Yeah. And I want to encourage you just to be optimistic and find a way to get involved for sure. Yeah, that's good. All right. Next one is it's always the right time. The can't do church is stuck in the past mm. or asleep dreaming about the future. The can do church believes now is the time to act. And man, I have totally seen this um in, in my years of working with churches just Back in the good old days, you know, or in, back in the glory days. You should oh. have seen this or that and how this big <laughs> this was. I've heard that or... so many times. It's like, that's the past. Like, <sighs> yes, let's let's remember it fondly, but let's be in, in here and now. And uh, and let's not be so focused on the, the future that we miss what God has for yeah. us today. True. And so Now, um, there is, I think there should be a little caveat to this, though. It's always the right time. Sometimes it's not the right time to promote a certain event, or like we have to be patient. Like, hey, yeah. we need to wait until these things have passed because you know Christmas time we had a lot of activity going on. We need to wait till there's if you're going to launch a new ministry where there's where you can give the proper airtime or the proper promotional yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, or people may not be ready for something yet, and you have to do some other things first to get your church ready True. to embrace a new kind of ministry. Uh, but the point is to always be thinking, what can we do right now? Yep. And to be forward thinking. And I think, I've always thought it'd be cool, and maybe I'll do this in the future whenever I have some spare time, which is never. Um, <laughs> I thought it'd be cool to have almost like a ministry entrepreneur t- team where you get some people together and say, hey, listen, what are some ministries that need to happen, and how can you go and be a ministry entrepreneur and start something? Yeah, We will equip you as a church, tell us what you need, and see if we can raise some funds to make it happen, um, but have a group of people that help enable other people who are self-starters, who want to start a ministry, yeah. uh, as long as it sort of jives with the mission of the church. Because uh, not every church can do everything, right? you got to right. decide as a church, what can we do well, Yeah, right? And kind of putting your focuses on that. Because there might be another church in the area that's doing that other thing well. And there's no reason for both of you to be doing that kind of community ministry. Or you can tag team, right? Right. Um, so it's always the right time to be thinking about these things. And then figure out when is the right time to implement those kinds of ministries. That's good. For real. That jives. All right. Uh, the next one. We have the right staff. This is kind of self-serving, <laughs> but it's in there. We have the right staff. The Can't Do Congregation believes it must get staffing correctly aligned before ministry can be accomplished. The Can Do Congregation doesn't ignore needing staffing changes, but also keeps moving forward with whatever staff is in place. That's good. Thoughts? Yeah. Well, I think uh, <laughs> it, this is a weird, you know, weird time for us. I mean, we, uh, you know, 
Don, you really uh, love me. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a chance to to all join as a staff and and get to preach, and um, you know it was, it was it was cool getting to to hear um, some of our pastors that don't typically do that. Yeah. Um, for us all to come together and just to to realize that hey, you know we we have for this time. I mean, we have what we need. We have who we need. Do you know? Do we need a lead shepherd? Of course, but yeah. for the here and now, um, God's equipping us, and, and God can use uh, who He's got. And, uh, and it's cool to yeah. see how you know people rise to the occasion to do what they need yeah. to do because sort of it's demanded of us. Yeah, you know, my job has changed significantly since I've been here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's you know my my title was a publications and marketing director and singles and young adults pastor. Yeah, you know, and it's. Kind how of become. Do, how do you put all that on a business card? I, you know, I just don't. Yeah. I don't do business cards. So, but, <laughs> you know, now I'm doing the new members class and greeters and our coffee ministry and, you know, all this other stuff. It's, you know, we we take on what God has called us to do. Yeah. And I think now that Mike and I are kind of arrived at uh, the connections pastor, it's like, we can't think of anything better. <laughs> you know, like, I'll connect you to things. I'll yes. recruit you for ministries. I'll get you plugged into our church. I, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about what we do here. I'm kind of the, the cheerleader. Uh, but, you know, we have to be ready to embrace the change. If you're yeah. on a staff on a church, man, be ready to roll with it. We wear lots of different hats. Yeah. You know, I wear, like, literally fit, like, real hats, but not as much recently. Yes. Um, now it's getting colder. I might get my warm hat. But, you know, if you're a volunteer... Hey man, support your staff. Show them some love. And I'm saying, not asking that for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> we had a uh, a pastor, not going to say any names here, who, with in good intentions, puts on Facebook to say, "Hey, it's a national, you know, support your pastor day." And <laughs> we were asking you, about it. You went there. Okay. <laughs> I did that. We love you, dude. You know who you are. Uh, but yeah, seriously, we're not doing this for ourselves. But you know, if you're in another church and whatnot, show your pastor some love, show him some encouragement, and um, our church. You do a good job of showing us love and encouragement, and we want to say we appreciate you. So we do. We are not. Absolutely. We are not in any kind of lacking for that. Yep. No, we really aren't. All right. What's the next one, dude? We have the exact resources God wants us to have. Ooh. The Can Do Church believes more money is needed. The Can Do Church does ministry with whatever resources God has provided, mm. and uh, that, that's good. What do you think about that, man? That's. Kind of controversial, right? Because the idea yeah. that as a church grows, your budget grows, and if your budget is growing, that means you're doing something right, and you're going to be able to do more ministry. You know, we mm -hmm. say generosity is sort of the engine of ministry. The more you give of your time and your treasure, the more the church is able to do, right? It's sort of the mm -hmm. fuel. Uh, if you're not giving your time and your treasure, then it limits what we can do. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, we also have to be creative. We have to be good stewards of, right. of what we have. I will say... And this is sort of, um, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Movies, when they're given an unlimited budget, mm -hmm. they tend not to be good. Yeah. Because they just do whatever they want to do. And having a budget, it sort of creates a box for you to color in, right? Mm -hmm. And to be creative within that box. And it forces you to think of solutions and ideas you wouldn't have thought of that may end up being better than if you just had all the money in the world, right? right. Um, and so, yeah. Be creative with what you got. Make it work. We've, like. Uh, yeah, we we we've had to do that. You know, we've had to uh, to find ways to make it happen. For real. And um, you know, it's one of the cool things about that is um, I think for me in doing student ministry here at this church is seeing how, uh, like when we have a, a big event or uh, taking kids to camp and just knowing that you know some of these families may not be able to afford afford to mm -hmm. be able to go and then to see our church rise to the occasion and and be able to help make that happen it's it's a it's a really it's cool awesome. thing to see it's beautiful like this podcast i mean it, you know when i first you know approached pastor steve about starting this podcast as a creative way to reach people during this time he said yeah you can do it you just can't spend any money <laughs> like, <laughs> okay so we're gonna be really creative so i found like stuff from all over the church reusing things and old microphones and i turned the video announcements room into the podcast so we just use the same camera just switch tripods around <laughs> and if you're able to in here to see this it's pretty funny you wonder why we're in such a cramped space doing this because it's like it's what we got it's what we got it's all right and know? it's good uh and it, 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 i think we did a pretty good job and what was cool too is someone stepped up and bought us new microphones because we desperately needed new microphones thank you you know who you are yes and so it's just cool when people step up to do that and meet the need yep. you know I love right. seeing that. Me too, man. One more. Go for it. Well, this is more of sort of the summary at the end of the article. Yeah. 
the can't do church views insufficiencies as obstacles. Hmm. You know, this is because we lack in this area, we can't do this, yeah. right? The can do church believes in the sufficiency of God. You know, just because this is difficult, just before, just because we have this problem or this obstacle, doesn't mean that with God we can't overcome that. You know, COVID has forced churches to get better in areas. Yeah, and we've talked about that some already in the podcast. And in fact, I remember when we had a meeting. Gosh, it was maybe three, four months ago, and it was Pastor Steve was kind of having this sort of epiphany that there's some things that are never going to change, and you guys need to embrace this new epitome, mm. this new. Um, Epiphany. Epif- not epiphany. Um, paradigm shift. Thank yes. you. There's a P in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> this new paradigm shift in the way of doing church. And you know, I took that really seriously and, and really sat down and thought through some things we need to improve on and really push for. And you know, I, I said something weird. I think I said, I don't mind problems mm-hmm. because I like finding solutions. That's just how I'm weird. I'm just mm-hmm. wired that way. And not everyone's that way. How I'm weird and wired. Weird and wired. <laughs> or <Yeah>. wired weird. <laughs> Depending how you arrange those adjectives. Um, Both but, are true. And not everyone's geared that way. And I think and that's okay. Some people, we need to be balanced as a church. Some people are good at bringing the brakes yeah. right, on ideas where we need to have brakes or say, hey, slow down. Let's talk about this. We've tried something like this in the past. Yeah. Um, and it didn't go so well. You're not saying it can't work now. Yeah. Um, but let's evaluate it and go for it. So we need all kinds of people in the church, right? Yeah, I think, I think uh, again, going back to attitude, I think rather than shutting things down and saying, well, we can't do that, um, we look at it and say, okay, how how can we do it differently or how can we do something else rather than just saying we, we can't do it, look for creative solutions, like you're saying. Look look for opportunities to be able to come in and say, where are we going to are we going to live in this? I love one of the quotes he makes here. The walking spiritually dead, you the know, walking. for those when you have a culture of pessimism, Christian zombies. Yeah, when you have a culture of pessimism, <laughs> that, that, that's that's literally like the walking spiritually dead, mm. and and they tend to take over, and we can't let that happen. No, uh, we, can't, we can't. Choose optimism. We got to. We've yeah. got to because our our God has a way of not has a way, but He does. He works all things out for good, and He moves forward, and He's moving us forward, and. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna linger in. Oh, we don't have this, or we should be nope. this. We we gotta say. And you have to cultivate that too. Yeah, it, I, I think you recognize your blind spots, but you you press forward rather than looking at all the things you don't have or you don't get to do. Yeah. You say, our call, our great commission is to go and make disciples. How do we do that? How do we do it creatively? And amen, bro. Move forward. Just take the box and chuck it out the window. And um, speaking of the box, hey, let's talk speaking about this of the box. boxes. This box here, if you're not familiar with Operation Christmas Child, OCC, OCC, yeah. you should be because it's an awesome, awesome ministry. Our church is having our Operation Christmas Child Sunday on the 22nd, and everyone's yep. going to be bringing their boxes. They're going to pray over them in the pews, and then we're going to drop them off, uh, socially distance as much as possible. But this ministry is so cool, and if you've not don't know anything about it, Matt. What do you put in a in a shoebox? Oh, well, I'd have to have the list in front of me. But you put uh, all kinds of stuff, all, <laughs> kind, all kinds of stuff to go to go out to it's kids. It's for Tooth, children. Toothbrushes. Uh, it's like they change every like. Okay, we can't do toothpaste this year, uh, or we can't do candy this year. Like mm. what? No candy. Uh, toys. I know that you put toys in there. You put washcloths, coloring books, crayons. Uh, like hygienic to, things are good. Right? Hygienic things, combs, brushes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah. Um, so these boxes go out to a lot of places. Uh, for kids who are going to get Christmas presents all over the world, all over the world. I mean, yeah. literally millions and millions. I think the goal yeah. is like three million boxes this year. I don't know. It's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy, a lot. crazy. I think they did two point four million boxes last year. That's so. I think cool. the goal is three million this year. Wow. Um, and the infrastructure they have to get these boxes all over the world is phenomenal, crazy. man. Phenomenal. Uh, but it's a great way to do something fun with your family. Just, you know, I know with going into stores right now, people are a little hesitant about that. Uh, but find a way to do it comfortably and safely to, you know, hit up the Dollar Tree or whatever and fill it with, let your kids choose some toys for them and explain to them where it's going. Yep. And um, you can write a note and put that in there. And, uh, you know, toothbrushes, some hygienic things as well are really helpful. This is actually a, a family tradition for our family. We love doing this yeah. every year. I want to yeah. highly encourage you guys to do that for sure. Yep. Um, and then what's cool about this, they don't just get a box. Think of this as a doorway. Kids get these gifts, and then what happens, 
it creates opportunities for them to hear the gospel. Yeah. And they have a whole discipleship program yeah. that they walk kids. They don't just tell them the gospel and walk away. They actually have the kids walk go to these classes. It. They walk yeah. them through this stuff. They di- actually disciple them. And the stories are so cool. It is cool. Yeah. So Love it. Do it. Fill out a box. We got to finish this out, dude. All right, bud. We're going right. to go uh, quick and simple this time, right? All right let's do it. Rock, paper, paper, rock, scissors. scissors. See who gets to pray. All right. All right. Best out of three. Best Ready? out of three. It's Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bam. Okay. That's a lot. Okay. Rock, paper, Ready? Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Bam. bam. Ah, oh, scissors. Okay. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bam. Oh, tie. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bam. All right. Matt All right. won that one. I'll pray. All right. Okay. We said we're going to do it at three, but that took too long. So. Yeah, that took too long. All right, bud. Why don't you uh, pray Let's us out? It. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this time to be able to come together today and to uh, focus on how we can be better for your kingdom. And yes. um, Lord, being positive and moving forward. Um, and this year, we have experienced so much adversity and so many challenges. And um, we could live in that and uh, we could uh, allow ourselves to to grow accustomed to that. Or we can say, let's, let's move mm. forward. Let's find a way to be creative and still be the church. And yes, Lord, I'm thankful for... This church, I'm thankful for um, so many other churches and, and, and Christians out there who uh, have risen to the occasion and, and mm. committed to serve and, and to be a part of um, making you famous, uh, even during a crazy year. God, I pray that you would uh, help us, Lord, to make the most of the opportunities that we have. And God, thank you again for being a God who always moves forward. And, yes, uh, Father, you you're you're okay with us looking back, but you want us to move forward. So we look back, mm-hmm. but then we look we we look to the future and we walk on. And um, God, I thank you for that. And we press on towards what is ahead. And thank you for whatever is ahead that we may not know, but you already know because you go before us and you are all yes. knowing and awesome. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Matt. Thank Let's, you for that, brother. Yes, I think we are. Done. Make sure if you have any questions or concerns or objections to things Daniel said, um, you can send emails. <laughs> or any way to, to appeal to our female audience. <laughs> uh, mums. Uh, Matt at fpcpeople.org or dmcginty at fpcpeople.org. Yeah, shoot us that email. And, of course, you can listen to us on all your favorite Podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Yep. And here's the thing. If you listen to us on one of these things and you dig us, hit the follow button. Yeah. You know, hit the follow button. It'd be great. We'd appreciate that. If you watch us on YouTube, click the notification bell. Hit the thumbs up button. Okay. We're not, you know, beyond asking for that. <laughs> Tell the Google overlords that our video is something that people should watch. And, of course, you can watch us on Facebook by liking our Facebook page at First Baptist Church. Pia. That's right. All right. That's all we got for now. Go get cozy. It's fall. Go get cozy. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye.